Hello, welcome to Live Questions. I am your host, Bill Harris. We at TV44 are here to answer your questions about life from a unique perspective, that is, a biblical perspective as opposed to a secular one. And today we are loaded with your viewer questions about life and a panel of local pastors who have reviewed them and researched biblical answers for you. Our panel is with us today, and I would like for you to meet them. First up, we have Pastor Ted Bible of St. Mark United Methodist Church here in Lima, followed by Pastor Jeremy Thomas, uh, Thompson rather, of Paulding Church with the Nazarene, and then Pastor Russ Thomas of the Gathering Place and New Crea Creation in um, Light, Ohio. And that's the Lutheran Church, by the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rounding off our panel is Pastor Chris Ewing, County Line Church on Her in Herod, in Herod, Ohio, that is. We're happy to have all of you with us today. And uh, as we go through these questions, boy, we, as I said, we're loaded with some really good <laughs> questions here. I think I'd like to lead with a viewer question that asks about COVID. Um, it says here that the situation surrounding COVID feels like it has been going on a long time and I'm starting to get confused. I have Christian friends who are strongly against things like masks and vaccines and other Christian friends who believe that masks and vaccines are a gift from God. And the viewer asks, what am I supposed to believe? So how would you, how would you, how would you answer that? Why, why well, we I think we're that? all confused. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. We get conflicting messages from, from the media, from the health officials, from neighbors, friends, you know, in regards to whether we should wear a mask, when we shouldn't wear a mask, you know, and, and it's just confusing. And, and so there is, in, in so many ways, for me, my perspective is, I don't know that there is a right answer other than doing what you, I mean, you're adults, you're supposed to be able to make responsible decisions yourself, do what you think is right for yourself and for those that you care for and love and, and, and move forward. And, and don't try to second guess the decision that somebody else made, you know, whether they wear a mask or don't wear a mask or get a vaccine or don't get a vaccine. You don't know what's going on in their life. You don't know what kind of medical history they may have. You don't know that if a vaccine is a good thing or a bad thing for them. Don't get into that kind of conflict and argument and, and, and sharing your opinion about that because you don't know where they're at and you don't really have any business knowing where they're at <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> right? <laughs> so that, you know, that's kind of my thought with that. So. <clears throat> yeah, um, <clears throat> you know, our church is, you know, taking a very, well, our, our policy is personal responsibility and so whether you want to get the vaccine that's fine if you don't want to get the vaccine that's fine if you want to wear a mask that's fine if you don't want to wear a mask that's fine that's how we have approached covid from the the get-go um if you want to hug somebody ask and make sure that they're okay with it you want to do the handshake that's fine um, we make ourselves available especially me as the pastor makes i make myself available to, to anybody for the needs that they have and and we will try and fulfill those needs uh, I'm okay with engaging in conversations, arguing, that's a whole different story, yes. but engage in the conversations. If you have friends that um, mask, don't mask, vaccine, don't vaccine, like ask why and, and see why and see to the heart of what their reasoning is. Um, and you can kind of slice through a lot of the politics and a lot of the you know, hearsay of, of all the arguments that we hear in the media and, and have a genuine conversation with your friends because you're friends. And, you should be living life together and you should be able to support each other whether you disagree or not and you're going to find that you can find common ground what i think as a society especially as the church that we need to really push is that listen this is a personal decision for you to make personally with god with your medical doctors and and everything else if you want to but there are real reasons not just for people not to take vaccine not just because of the covid vaccines um, convictions that they've had prior to this for years and decades. And um, it's just most people don't realize that because those people that have um, not taken vaccines are, are pretty quiet and personal and they keep that private. Mm -hmm. And so we just need to honor those that people want to be um, private. But if they want to talk about it, talk about it with them. Just don't argue. Yeah, very good. Pastor Russ? Um, yeah, that's kind of one of those things that through social media, especially you, as a pastor, you can kind of keep your thumb on the pulse of society. And when we started seeing the, the ugliness starting to arise from this, we made sure that as a church leadership that 
we, we had a conversation with the congregation and just said, you know, that's, that's something that is happening out there. There's many things that are happening out there that we're not going to bring into the house of God. Mm -hmm. And, um, but then you still have to monitor those things even from a distance and make sure that those temperaments aren't arising and causing division within your body of Christ because once the body of Christ is divided, then society wins and the world wins, then the church is gonna flail. So um, we're just really very careful about monitoring the discussions. Um, we're very uh, critical, like they said, and making sure we stress the point that each person has their own choice to make in this. Mm -hmm. Educate yourself, but make your own choice and then we're not to um, offend others in our beliefs to make sure that uh, we're, we're trying to make someone do what we would do. Okay, let them have their own decision and respect what their decision is. Mm. All right, Pastor Jeremy. Yeah, I think that we would all do better to listen more um, and not to political leaders, not to um, echo chambers, but to each other. And I think that that in listening, people feel like they're heard and then you can have a conversation. And it seems like most of the banter around COVID is more people just shouting opinions at each other mm -hmm. rather than taking time to just say, why do you have that? Or why are you making that choice? And, and I feel like we are quick to speak and slow to listen. Mm -hmm. And it seems like Jesus said that maybe we should be quick to listen. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that would, that would solve a lot of our issues because like I said, I feel like unfortunately in the church it has even become more politicized than, um, than we are kingdom centered and focused. And, and so I think that we focus a lot on individual rights and I'm not saying those are good or great or grand, but in kingdom, I think we surrender those for the greater good of all people. And so I think part of that is understanding and listening and, and being able to have better conversations that aren't influenced by news media and 24 hours news channels, but they're influenced by how do we be the kingdom in the midst of where we find ourselves and what that looks like. It seems like the common thread that's running through all of this is the need for unity uh, because right. and that's the, the world is so church, divided. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. society, it doesn't matter. I mean, gov government, um, politics, just society in general is really pushing division, which is seeping into the church. And Paul is quite clear in all of his letters because he addresses it in almost all of his letters is that you need to fight for unity. Yeah. And um, just like he's saying, unless you're going to sit down and have a conversation, you know, with those things, but we don't need to stress our opinions. We don't need to sit there and, and say we need to have discussion and, you know, critical thinking and, and even hard line conversations is even good as, as long as it's with the appropriate person. Some people like to have, we would look at it and be like, wow, they're arguing. They're really not. They're just having a, a nice conversation mm -hmm. debate. Mm -hmm. And those are healthy, especially mm -hmm. as believers. And, um, so we just need to make sure that we are fighting for the for the unity, making sure that the division is staying out. The front and center thing is, is that Jesus is presented. We're here to spread his gospel and to share his light. So what, you know, to answer the question of what I am supposed to believe during this time, yeah. that's between you and God. Yeah. Believe that Jesus is king, that he came and died for your sins, my sins, everybody else's sins, and that our mission did not change when COVID came in. It is to spread his gospel, his salvation to those that are lost and hurting. Yeah. And you mentioned listen, and that encompasses more than just the topic of COVID, you know, and where sure. we've become a culture where we're listening to <laughs> respond and not listening to hear. Mm -hmm. And we catch that so many times in our counseling sessions, I'm sure you do too, is they're ready for an answer without even digesting what it is that you spoke of. So. One of the first core things we have to do, especially with new believers, is teach them how to converse where you're hearing what the other person is saying because society in itself is not. We're just ready to throw our fists and scream our heads off without actually hearing what the other person has said. Mm. Yeah. Well, we got to get the politics out of it, like you said. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so Good true. luck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's your job, Bill. <laughs> well, let, let's... let's we, we got about five minutes in this, in this segment here before we take a break, but what about something else that could be possibly as explosive? And that is a, a Christian writes in to talk about yoga. Is it okay to do yoga? It's getting very popular. 
and I even see it in some churches, but I don't feel comfortable with it, is what the viewer says here. Do you feel comfortable with it in your churches? If so, why? If not, why? There's many, I'll just say there's many, um, what, what some churches deem as minor issues that they allow to penetrate. Uh, leaven is leaven, mm -hmm. and so there's many issues that you can bring into your church that are stair steps to something bigger. Um, I see yoga, it's a meditative thing, mm -hmm. and there's a big difference between meditation and prayer. Um, it depends on what entity that you're seeking in your moment of meditation or prayer. Um, a lot of people pray, but they're not praying to God through His Son, Jesus Christ. So um, I see the, the, the yoga as being something that is meditative. And, and, and um, there's many times I find myself purposely becoming alone with God, mm -hmm. um, but I'm doing it in prayer. So what is, the, what is the ultimate goal? But many times if we're not careful of the things that we allow into the church that aren't divided by the truth of the word, the bone from the marrow, um, you'll open the door to other things, mysticism and new age type of thinking. And it isn't long and your entire church is polluted by the leaven. And once the leaven gets in, you cannot get it back out. I, I, I don't have a problem with stretching. That's what I think yoga at its core is, is stretching. Um, I think that to, to push back a little bit, I think that a lot of things have the label Christian and they don't resemble Jesus whatsoever. And so... To say that yoga in and of itself, as far as stretching and such, is bad, I, I think that that you can use it in a way where you are meditating on who God's call us to be. And so if you're talking about yoga as a form of stretching and 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 calming down with the understanding of who God's created us to be, I don't think in essence that's a bad thing. Does it have some ways that you can bring in some of that stuff? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I think also people use Jesus in ways that, you know, the enemy's just as excited about and, and maybe more so because you've wrapped it in religion and people think it's good. And so I, I personally don't have, I totally understand if this person doesn't feel comfortable, then they shouldn't do yoga. Right, <laughs> right. But if a Christian's like, it helps me to stretch, to relax, to focus in on what's important as far as who Jesus is and what that looks like, I, I think that you have to make some of those distinctions, obviously. But as a, a stretching practice, I don't know that I, it, 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 it can be an amoral thing. What do you attach to it is probably the, the important part, yeah, I would say. Part, I would yeah. say. Is the sum and substance of what you're saying stretch with Jesus on your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Which, which is totally... Because I think exciting. we should take care of our body. Yeah. Right. And right. I think that stretching is... is and, and some of the stuff, I, you know, that you've done, that I, I think that it's not like you, if you do yoga, you're, you're going to hell. If you do some of these things that lead you away from who Jesus is calling you to be. But once again, I think a lot of people use the Bible in those ways as well. So then you well, can bring, think, you'll get into your church, but call it calisthenics. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to ask, can you, can, can, can you do the stretching and not call it yoga? Not call it yoga, well, yeah. Well, let's remove yoga. Let's put anything in there. Martial <laughs> arts. There you, you go. got, there you, go. you know. Zumba. Uh, yeah, all these different <laughs> things. Is the act sin or is it the spiritualization it that come? For it. So yeah, you yeah. start switching the topic mm -hmm. in there, mm -hmm. and, the, and the concept is what you're saying is, is listen, the, the act of self-defense, the act of stretching, the act of whatever, that is not necessarily mm -hmm. bad. It is the spiritualization. Mm -hmm. The question is, is that thing that you're doing, has that spiritualization been detached from the act? And you have to be very cautious of that because in a lot of ways they haven't. In some ways they have, depending on where you're going to do yoga, martial arts, or anything else, right? Absolutely. Um, so if you're bringing that spiritualization, well then what desensitization, what, well, evil are you bringing in mm -hmm. that you're going to then attach to yourself and then keep you from the love of Christ? So we, we, because we are body, soul, and spirit, Okay, the body doing the stretching, the soul, which is the mind, will, and emotions, what our mind is on, what we're focusing on mentally, it can, which can go into the heart, and um, the spirit being our connection with God and, and vice versa, they, they need to be in sync in order to be... Um, 
yeah. to be right with God. You right? mentioned connecting with God. Um, you know, the Bible talks about darkness a lot and how darkness is evil. Well, in the mornings I get up at 3 a.m. and I'm taking a walk. And the further I really? get out away from the light, mm -hmm. I lose my sight mm -hmm. from blindness mm -hmm. and then I lose my hearing from sound. And I've lost those two senses that tie me to the earth and I connect with God better in the darkness as long as the darkness is planned in my life and <laughs> darkness doesn't creep upon me. So I connect better well in the put. darkness with God because yeah, yeah, yeah. I've lost my earthly senses. Yeah, because so a lot of people are, are that way. So, yeah. that is. The spiritual connection. Yeah, okay. Yes. All right. Well, listen, we're going to take a break uh, for our viewers. Uh, we're going we're to come right back with more interesting uh, conversation that you have sent us in the mail right after this. So stay with us. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. All right, we are back, and uh, we are here with our panel of experts on the, the subjects that we are discussing today. <laughs> loose, you all are, loose all term, laughing. yeah. Loose term. <laughs> uh, here's a question. Well, there are two questions here that I'd like to bring on the floor because they, they're quite similar. Uh, I see a lot of people on the street corners asking for money or food. I am hesitate to give money because I think it will be used for drugs. Should I think differently? Now, before you answer... The next question, similar, what is the best way to minister to the homeless or to reach out to those who are in need? So, given that background, well, you're about to speak, I could tell. Yeah, so, I mean, I've kind of been all over the board on, in regards to seeing people on the corner and giving them money. Uh, you know, I, I've done it sometimes, you know, and sometimes I, I, I've done it because I felt the calling of the Holy Spirit to do it. And I've talked to other people who have been in that exact same situation. Mm -hmm. Other times, you know, I, my thought is, didn't I just see you up in another town doing the same <laughs> thing? And didn't I hear that you also drive a new truck? <laughs> you know, and, and so there's, there's people out there panhandling, there's people taking advantage of that situation mm -hmm. um, who, they're deliberate. You know, so it's hard to distinguish between those who have a legitimate need versus those who are trying to take advantage of you know, the vulnerable individuals yeah. with a big heart yeah. who want to reach out and help somebody. Because yeah. it's not like you can take time to sit down and interview them to find out more well, you're specifically. At the, you're at the traffic light, you know, and it's yeah. getting ready to turn green, so you're going to have to go here. So your timing sometimes isn't, isn't very much. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me, where, where I live, you know, in Lima, you know, giving money to people I see on the street, I, I just wouldn't do that. You know, if I want to buy them a Coke or a sandwich, you know, that's fine. But yes, I've also heard that they've you know, thrown part of it away too. I mean, so there's all kinds of stories surrounding all that. And so you have to do what you feel, number one, is right for you. Mm. You know, my, my belief has always been, you know, I'm doing what I feel God has called me to do. What they do with it on their end, that's entirely up to them. Amen. But I'm responding to how, you know, I feel I need to respond to the gospel message and to that person in need. Mm. Pastor, so. Pastor Russ and Pastor Jeremy, you two are on the front line in dealing with me. Oh, oh, Pat, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. yeah. These two. <laughs> These two. These two. Yeah. Okay. You're on the front lines in, in dealing with Him this more stuff. so than I. But is yeah. that okay? Well, then, Russ, tell us. So, What's knowledge is power, right? Yes, so, yes. Um, our church, our foundational gifting is homelessness and addiction. Uh, we have a, a bus ministry called Connected Hope where we actually have supplies on the bus and we go out at night and we connect with them right where they live, in the woods, wherever they're at, we find them and we build relationships with them, build trust that we can eventually fill the gaps in their life, whether it be untreated mental illness or addiction or whatever reason, and then move them on through biblical discipleship, and it's a daily, move them on into sustainable housing. Now to address the fly in the sign, they call it is what they call it. Um, I can say honestly that um, there's only one gentleman who flies a sign in the Lima area that we actually find homeless when we go out at night. The, the rest of them that we see around town that are flying signs, when we're out at night, we don't see them because they're usually home in bed. So that's been our experience. We've never come across the majority of them. We've never come across 
uh, the folks there. Now the gentlemen at Latham and Cole, everybody, I mean uh, Latham and Cable at the bus stop there, everybody knows him. Um, he does live in a woods within that region, won't give that location away, but um, typically the ones that are flying signs, what I do is you have a conversation with them. Their sign says they need something. So mm -hmm. I ask them what that need is and it's either housing, I'm hungry, or, or I need money. So then we have a, a wealth of community resources here in Lima. Lima is rich in resources. So every one of those needs that they ask for, if you have that conversation with them, every one of those needs you can meet without mm -hmm. giving them cash. And oh. you'll soon, by that conversation, you'll soon find out their motive and why they're out there and typically they get frustrated because you're tying them up to all those light changes mm -hmm, by, mm -hmm. with a conversation. So um, if, you, if you have the time, I would suggest that you have the conversation with them respectfully, but uh, you should be able to meet every need without giving them cash. And then if they refuse every need, then the le need's not legitimate. And the Bible says, shake the dust off my sandals and move on. So. Yeah, not only that, uh, there's another scripture about eating. Oh, if it would not work, if he should not eat. eat. It don't work, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, so I've, you know, I, I, I speak down at the Lima Rescue Mission, which is, which is a men's homeless shelter, sure. and you know, a lot of the guys I see on the street with signs saying they need food, I've never seen down at the shelter, you know, uh, and so I wonder if they take advantage of the other resources available as well, you know, and and people may think, well, shelter food isn't really very good. Well, the church I used to attend served food at those shelters. Let me tell you, it's really good, <laughs> you know, and the guys really appreciated it, you know, and so, as like Russ said, there's, there's lots of resources available. And, you know. And, and keep in mind, too, that we're not saying these guys are lazy or that there's anything wrong with what they're doing. There's still a reason behind this, okay? Right. So once, once we start that biblical discipleship and we build that relationship by giving them resources and they start to trust us, then we start asking them questions and find the gaps in their life. And what you'll find is some of those folks are out there because they may not know the resources available. They may have an untreated mental illness that needs to be dealt with before they can even understand and encompass what life is. So even, even those ones that are panhandling and flying signs that aren't working, there's still something deeper there that happened way back mm -hmm. when that causes right. them to be who they are today. And until we fix that, you know, we sit down and prioritize things. Yeah, and what, yeah. what, they're, what you find is, I had one gentleman, we put him in a hotel for three days and he was supposed to contact WOCAP and do an application. WOCAP. WOCAP, which is um, West, it's, it's West Ohio Community Action Partnership. It's the old LACA. They provide funding for deposits and rent, all kinds of stuff. It's a great resource. Mm -hmm. So I put him in a hotel for three days. We paid for him. And, and then the, the goal is, is for him to submit an application for emergency housing. And then WOCAP will take over the hotel expense. And then we're not spending God's resources mm -hmm. foolishly. Well, he called three days. And when I finally contacted him, I said, why haven't they called you back yet? He said, I don't know. I've called them every day like you asked me. I said, did you leave a voicemail? He said, no, you didn't ask me to do that. You asked me to call them. So see, there's gaps in some of these folks' lives, culturally, for whatever reason, yeah. that we need to find out through a conversation or they end up continuing where they are. Yeah. And we've, we've proven it's successful. If we just have those conversations, show them the radical love of Jesus Christ and follow the scriptures as you disciple someone. Yeah. And you, you re made reference to something twice at least, Untreated mental health. Mm -hmm. Do you find that is uh, one of the biggies in terms of the problems that you're dealing with? Any, any of it? Yeah, I mean, just yesterday I got a call for a gentleman that we've worked with for three years. Um, twice we got help, assisted him in getting jobs and housing, mm -hmm. and both times he ended up back homeless again. This last time we found him, it'll be this February, a year ago, just last February, living in a wooden crate <clears throat> so small that his feet were sticking wow. out in February. Wow. And it was then we brought a doctor out on the bus with us. She diagnosed him right there on the spot. She got his meds because he wouldn't go to the agencies. He was afraid of people. He wouldn't go to the agencies. So he lived alone in this crate. She diagnosed his mental health, got him the meds. He got back into housing, got a job. He was living on East High Street. I just got called again Sunday by another pastor in town. He's homeless again. Mm -hmm. What happened is, is I took my meds. I got a job. I'm living in a house. Things are going great. I don't need those meds anymore. Mm -hmm. And they stop taking them. Boom. The cycle starts all over again. So wow. now we have to educate him sure. on the importance of maintaining sure. his medications. Sure. On the other hand, your church, you described it as out in the boondocks and the right. cornfields and the like. <laughs> Should your congregation feel guilty because they're not doing the kind of street ministry his is? Oh, absolutely and you're in a not. different yeah. setting. No, we, um, we've helped people that are homeless. Um, I know, um, it's been probably about a year and a half. There was a lady that was living in her van and we helped her, but that is not our main focus. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, what we were talking about prior to the taping is, is that how great is it? You know, we have to have the mindset of we are, all of us here are part of the body of Christ, the greater church. You know, our church doesn't need to do every single ministry because God already has it covered in his church. Sure. And it's great to know that there are resources like this because if we come across somebody, I have no idea what to do. I don't have to play catch up. I don't, we don't have to go and then, then cause harm. We have resources that God has already raised up and saying, hey, let me give a call. You know, hey, can you help this guy out or you tell us what to do, where to send, send them, you know, whatever. And that's awesome because we have been called for other things, for other purposes sure. they you, don't do. Yeah, you, you have food and clothing? Is yeah, we have a food you? pantry and a clothing pantry. And, and we, Yeah, we mainly serve, we do not serve the Lima area because we know our church cannot support. And there's plenty of food banks um, in Lima. Mm -hmm. And so nobody is serving the Ada, Bluffton, Alger area. Um, you know, so we serve them. And, and every week we have... You know, well, we serve probably anywhere from 100 to 200, depending on the month. Really? Um, yeah, individuals, families, whatever, however they calculate it. I, I don't look at the numbers. They just tell me. And uh, but we also have a clothing pantry. So that's open to anybody. And so if you, uh, and that's really great, especially if you have a fire, then we open that up. You can come if you get a flood or if you just lost your job or, you know, something happens. And they do more than just clothing. They've got um, household goods, people that can't afford dif different things. And yeah, they do a fantastic, wonderful job for people that have low income or um, not, uh, don't have income. Yeah. So we, we do different things to help those yeah. in poverty. It's interesting, <clears throat> two different ministries, but, and you're not clashing, but you're overlapping to the point right. of being complementary to the unsaved that you're trying to reach. And if you put it in terms of how our communities are set up, okay? We're each gifted for a specific yes. foundational ministry, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. That happens to be where God has put us. It's, it's no different than if, if your house catches on fire, your neighbors all don't run out and put the fire out. You call the experts, then the firemen come in and put the fire out. And, and the firemen don't complain because no one else is helping them. Okay, they were gifted to do that specific ministry. They're called to it. That's their gifting. That's their skill. That's their profession. And we're no different. So we need to we need to be one unified body of Christ in all the things that we do, and knowing that the right hand does one thing, the left hand does another, and together we can do a lot. So that's what it comes down to. Right. Very good. Well, we're all out of time, <laughs> but uh, that that's interesting, and I I think it's very encouraging to our viewers as well to know that there can be different pockets of different types mm -hmm. of ministry outreaches out there. And you work together. I mean, you may not yeah. see one another necessarily, but you're still working for the yeah. same overall cause. God is good. Yeah, God is good. Well, mm -hmm. listen, let me just say to you and our audience, uh, this same fine panel will be back with us again next week. So we'd like you to make sure you tune in again next week at this same time so you can enjoy them again. We'll have more of your questions on next week's show. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Have a wonderful day. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.